2021 MacBook Pro, is it a good replacement for the 2015? Are they actually practical? Do they actually do what I need them to do? Is Apple Silicon the future? They look great and they've got loads of ports, but how do they stand up with day-to-day -day usage? Are they any good? Can the new 2021 MacBook Pro finally feel like a worthy replacement for the 2015 MacBook Pro? Let's find out. It's been about three weeks since I upgraded from the 2015 MacBook Pro to the 2021 MacBook Pro, and I've got some opinions. So first of all, the 2015 MacBook Pro is out of my life now. I no longer need it. 2021 MacBook Pro does everything I could possibly want and more and is a very very worthy replacement for the 2015. So just to recap I've got the silver model of the 2021 MacBook Pro. It's the 14 inch version and it's got the M1 Pro chip inside with 10 CPU cores and 16 GPU cores and I've gone with one with 16 gigabytes of memory and it's got a terabyte of hard disk space. So First of all, it's so fast, so, so, so fast, compared to the 2015 model. The 2015 model wasn't slow, very decent speed. This laptop just completely blows it out of the water. Launching applications is near instant. Loading even complex web pages is near instant. Working on heavy load tasks like editing video feels so smooth you wouldn't even know that it's actually a CPU intensive task. I think the most impressive thing about this laptop, having had it for three weeks, is that I haven't yet heard the fans turn on, not even once. And I've been doing video editing and video rendering and all sorts of things that would have made the 2015's fans spin up all day every day. It doesn't make any noise at all. It's just completely silent. It's as silent as an iPhone. Like, you wouldn't know that a computer was on, even if you were in a room alone and it was completely silent. It's incredible. Related to that is the battery life. Now, the battery life in the 2015 one, when I first got it, was really good, but being several years old now, the battery life has deteriorated and it's probably at, I think, 70 or 80% of its design capacity. This one's obviously, obviously still at 100% design capacity, so, or thereabouts, so it holds a lot of charge, but with an average load of just kind of doing web browsing and maybe writing a few documents, uh, looking at social media, that kind of thing, you can easily leave this on all day and probably still have a little bit of battery to spare at the end of the day. When you start doing heavier workloads, things like video editing in particular, takes up a lot of battery life. Uh, and if your primary web browser is Google Chrome, that's also gonna use up a lot of battery life. If you use Safari as your primary web browser, that's quite a bit nicer on battery life. So I've kind of been splitting my time between them. I like, I like Chrome, but I like the battery life on Safari. So why not have both? The other impressive thing about the battery is it's really, really fast when you plug it in. The MagSafe, really good. It actually makes, 2015 doesn't do this, it actually makes a little noise when you plug it in. Bloom. But it's really impressive how quickly this charges up. So I think Apple advertised that a dead battery can charge to 50% in 30 minutes or an hour. Or am I thinking of the iPhone? I don't know. Anyway, in my experience, it's really, really, really quick to charge and satisfyingly slow to discharge. So no problems at all with the battery life. In fact, generally, I don't bother with the cable during the day. I just have the laptop on its own. I don't use an external anything. I'm not, I don't use an external keyboard. I don't use an external mouse, mouse. I don't use an external monitor. So I just have this and it's lovely. You know, I've just got one unit that I can walk around the house. I can work downstairs in here. I can take it out to a cafe and I've got everything I need in one place. So let's talk about the keyboard. It's really nice keyboard. I didn't have any models in between. I know that there are a lot of problems with the was it the generation after this where the keys would stop working for a lot of models. I really liked the way that these keys felt after I got used to them for a little bit. The keys on this laptop are even better. They just feel so nice to type on. They've just got that really kind of buttery feel but satisfying clunk as well. It's smooth but clunky. They found a perfect balance. 
I don't know how long they spent finding this perfect balance, but it's worked. So you can just type and it feels really nice. Well done Apple, great keyboard. The trackpad as well, it's, the trackpad's very similar to the 2015 model, as in brilliant. My only slight complaint, is very minor, my slight complaint about the trackpad is it's actually slightly too big. When I'm resting my fingers to type on the keyboard, sometimes just a little bit of my thumb will catch the edge of the trackpad and then I'll be trying to scroll with my other hand and wondering why, why is it not scrolling properly and it's just because it's detecting a little bit of finger from this hand. Slightly irritating, but anyway, it's a lovely trackpad and it's only very occasionally that it gets in the way, so certainly not a huge issue. Let's talk about the webcam. Finally, Apple have put an HD webcam in their laptop. So I think the 2015 model, I think it's a 720p webcam. This one is 1080p, wow. Still not hugely impressive, but good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna switch from this camera to this camera. And I'm also gonna use the laptop sound. So this is what the microphones sound like. And they've also got the kind of portrait mode at the kind of hardware level. There's a little option in the control center video effects, and then you can choose portrait mode. So if I turn that on, you'll see it kind of blurs my background and that's all done in kind of software. So this isn't kind of a zoom effect or a Google Meet effect. This is an in-camera effect and it's fairly, fairly good, you know, just like the iPhones one is. It kind of still gets confused by hair, but that's fine. So I mean, if you just want a little bit of privacy in the background behind you when you're on a call, you can now get that even if the app you're using doesn't have support for that, you can still have a blurred background, so that's really nice. I realised that I recorded the previous clip at high quality rather than maximum quality in QuickTime, so that clip of me just then was in 720p. This clip is in HD, so this is the full capabilities of the built-in webcam. One really nice thing about the built-in webcam on this one compared to the 2015 one is it's got a much wider angle of view. I think in the 2015 you'd probably just get like my face and a little bit more. This one's got a lot more frame top and bottom and left and right. Overall it's a worthy webcam for what webcams are generally used for. You're not going to start using it for producing a blockbuster because that's not what it's for. It's for going on video calls and stuff and for video calls and stuff it's a really good webcam. Um, I do have one small complaint about the microphone actually uh, which is that it's located just here underneath the left speaker grill which is kind of okay until you want to do something like uh, screen recording. If you want to do a screen recording where you're also typing then I found that my hand was rubbing against these microphones underneath the speaker grill enough that it just made the recording kind of unusable. So that's quite frustrating if you want to make a recording of your voice and type at the same time, which on a laptop, fairly common, uh, you're going to have to use an external microphone. So related to the webcam and the microphone is the speakers and they are amazing. Really, 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 really good speakers. The bass on them is just incredible. I mean, it's not gonna, you know, give you a hi-fi separate to run for their money, but it will certainly give you a mid-range Bluetooth speaker run for its money. Not sure if that's a very good demo because it depends on how good the speakers that you're listening to this on are for you to kind of understand how good this is. But anyway, take my word for it. These are really good speakers. The notch. Almost forgot about the notch because that's what it's like. You just kind of forget about it. It just blends in. I mean, it's definitely there, but I definitely don't notice it every day. In fact, I don't think I ever notice it anymore. It's just, it's just a notch. And in fact, when you put an app into full screen, it effectively disappears because the top menu bar goes black. And so it just sort of blends in with the notch and you don't see it. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this laptop because it's just the complete package. It's got the ports, it's got the speed, it's got the amazing, amazing screen, and it's just got everything you could possibly need. So, I think that's it. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.
Oh, 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 oh,